Now, one more important thing about the depth for search algorithm is that it can easily be implemented using recursiveness, right? Um, I wanted to first look at the non-recursive version because in actuality that is more efficient, right? It doesn't create so many uh, call stacks. It is way faster and it is still pretty easy to understand. Um, but really, I think uh, either at school, at university, or maybe if you want to implement your own uh, binary tree, you might need this um, recursive implementation because it would be it might be easier to think about it. So let's let's see how do we actually implement that in a recursive manner. The idea is very simple. What we have to do is create a process that can be repeatable for any any node. What is that process? Well, it's the one that we talked about uh, when we implemented the iterative version, right? The basically the operations inside the loop, but just using function calls. So what was the first step that uh, we did? Well, it was just looking at the stack, but now we don't have a stack. So we only uh, take the element, which is going to be the element that we have currently passed to the function. First things first, I want to take a look at the function signature, right? We're gonna have basically a very similar uh, fun function signature. It's gonna be something like print depth first, let's call it recursive this time. And it's going to be another tree node. And I'm gonna call it this one. This time I'm gonna call it just node. I'm not gonna call it root because it's not necessarily the root. It can be any node. Now that we know the function signature, we can start thinking about what we have to do here because since the function signature shows us that we can really pass in any node, no longer is it called root. It can be any node of the binary tree. Well, we just have to come up with a process that can be repeatable using the same function over and over. So if we call this function right now with the root node that we have, and that's the only one that we really have access to, we're gonna print out zero. But then what? So after we print zero, we want to print one on the screen, but we actually want to do it for all the descendants of any node, right? Therefore, what we can do is instead of just printing node, instead of just, you know, printing something like this node of left of val, what we can do is simply call print depth first recursive with the left side of the node, of the binary tree, right? And uh, well, aside from just checking if it's null or not, so we're gonna have to do a check here. Let's say node left doesn't equal null. That's basically everything. So if we go here and we change this to print recursive, let's see what happens. Well. We did indeed print the left side of the binary tree. That's amazing. We printed zero, one, and three, because wh why is that? Well, the first, the first time around, of course, this node was root, right? So of course, uh, root arrow var was zero, but this function call actually called the same function, but with node arrow left. Node arrow left is the node with value one. So the second time around this function called called, this value was one. So it got printed on the screen. And then it's, and then uh, since node was the left side of the root, node arrow left meant root arrow left arrow left, which is the node with value three in this case. And that's why three got printed on the screen. And after that, nothing got executed because this was in fact null. This node arrow left was null and nothing more happened. That's perfect. And can we do the same with the right side of the of the binary tree? Yes, we can. We can just change this from left to right. And if we try to launch this, you will notice that we do in fact get the exact same execution order as with the depth first search that we have implemented in the previous video. But hold on, why does it actually give us the correct order? Well, that is because if you think about it, the first step is, right, is printing just the root node. And then we're calling both of them. So we are first calling f of root, right? Then we are calling f of root of left, right? And f of root of, f of, um, so our function name of root of left is going to instantly execute, right? And what's that gonna do? That is actually going to print out one. And then what? Well, that one is also going to call f, but not with root of, not if root of uh, left, but root of left of left in this case, which is going to in fact print three. All right. And 
only after this function call finishes its execution, so only after this this line gets executed after the fir the third <laughs> recursive call, then we start printing right side the right side of the binary tree. So what happens? Well, after that we actually print out what f of root of left. We still we still are at root of left of right, which is in fact four. Okay, that's perfectly fine. And now that we finished both of these, this function call actually returns, right? This one that, that we have here. And since this returns, what, what is next? What's going to happen next? Well, the next one is root of right, because this is from the other, uh, from the first iteration of uh, this function call, this recursive function call, right? So next up, we're actually going to call f of root of right. And that is going to print out two, and again, recursively call its own left and right side. So in our case, it's going to be f of root of right of left, right, which is five. And lastly, f of root of right of right. And of course, as discussed before, instead of printing, we can do whatever we want here. Um, if we wanted, we can simply say if node arrow val equals four, well, we can do something with it and say node, yay, we found, found four, right? And then else we can just print out whatever we have iterated over. Uh, let's do that. And if we try to launch this, of course, we get four here. And that's before we can actually stop the execution of some of the function calls. So we can just return straight out of here. And if we try to launch this, you'll notice there's no difference. Now, as you can see, simply just returning out of it doesn't actually stop the iteration of the rest of the binary tree. It does stop the iteration of the node with the value four to continue down to its descendant. So if we had, for example, let's add here to, so left, right is the node four, and let's add another one to the left and let's have it be seven, for example. You will see that seven is not printed on the screen. If we add this return back, you will notice it gets printed on the screen. Now I've uh, put every single function call inside a rectangle, right? And at the top is basically the what is being called. So the first function called the primordial, uh, function call of this recursive mess that we have here is basically f of root, right? We're calling it with the root node that's in the main, that's in the main uh, function. If we go here, this is basically that call, right? But that call actually initiates two other calls, right? So if we go up here, um, we get a call to the left and a call to the right node, right? So this is what this denotes here, root of, root of left or left of root and right of root. And those also call this function two more times. But after that, nothing happens because, um, for example, root of left of left is the node node three, which doesn't actually have uh, a descendant, so nothing more gets called. But if the binary node is, is uh, larger, we're gonna have more calls down the line. But what's important here to note is that when adding this return statement, what do we actually return from? Well, we, we return from the function that was called with the argument being the node with the value four. Which one is that? Well, it's this one, right? This is the node four. And that is what? That is, this is root of left or left of root really. And uh, this is right of that. So it's root left, right is this function call. So in reality, we are returning early from this function, guaranteeing that no more other um, no more other calls are being generated from this function where I did nothing else was generated anyway, but from these other function calls, nothing is being returned. So we are still at that point where it's still being called over and over and over, right? So usually this problem is being solved by adding here, for example, a, let's say a variable, let's say call it found, set it to zero, and we have found equals one and we just return. And here if 
found equals one, we simply return out of anything. And this way, we guarantee that after the value four has been iterated over, we no longer iterate over the whole binary tree. Because if this is a global variable, everybody can access that. And that, uh, that is a very simple way of solving this issue. But just understand that returning here doesn't actually stop the whole process. That's very important to understand. So as a summary, what are we doing actually? Well, first things first, we process whatever we are given, be it search or just print um, the value of the node. Then we check if we have anything on the left and basically do the same thing and tell the program to do the same thing for the left side if we do have anything there. And then the same thing for the right side. After we have finished with the left side, we do the same thing for the right side. And basically that's how we end up with um, a depth for search implementation in a recursive manner. Seems a bit more straightforward than the iterative, iterative way, but it's a bit more inefficient. So I don't recommend using this in production. That's about it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, leave them down comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code can be found on the description down below. Take care, bye.